hello. Um, first day of school was today, and that was interesting. <laughs> um, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it was just, it's interesting. It was, it was. Um, yeah, I didn't really do anything much. It was kind of boring, to be honest. I basically just went to school, met up with my friend, my best friend at school, and then we hung out for a bit, and then <gasps> I'm really tired. Interacting with people socially is exhausting. <laughs> I'm really excited to see my best friend though. Like I have it because I haven't seen her all month. I mean all two months of like summer. So that's been fun. And then after meeting up with her and then going to the auditorium for um <laughs> sorry, I'm like out of it. I'm tired. I'm also extremely dehydrated. Like I just I am loopy. <laughs> oh, also, it was incredibly awkward earlier today because I saw this guy who basically I know likes me, but I don't like him. But I kind of let him on because I was thinking about getting in a relationship with him purely because I wanted to have more sexual experiences so that I can like use them on a partner that I'm actually like attached to and like yeah wrong horrible what is wrong with me I don't know what was I, I don't know what I was thinking but long story short he tried to kiss me and then in that moment I realized just how wrong it was to like lead him on purely because I wanted more sexual experiences when I'm like not attracted to him whatsoever. Like, I mean, he's a good looking guy. He's just way too tall for me. Like I'm literally a midget. And also we are very different. Like we are just like too different to be compatible, I don't think. And for some ungodly reason, he thinks I'm attractive, which I don't understand at all. Like, okay, dude, like you're, you, are you blind? <laughs> um, but I think he ha thinks he ha I, will, I think he has a thing for like short white girls because like a lot of the women that he's like girls that he's dated are have been short white girls. I think that's why they like he's attracted to me, but like I'm not attracted to him. I was just going to use him because I wanted to be more sexually active for my partner that I actually cared about, which is really fucked up. And like you should never do that. Like that's just <sighs> really, um, <laughs> Angela. Like you just why that that's incredibly stupid and like you shouldn't hurt or use someone like that i mean sure he was kind of using me too and i kind of rationalized it when i thought about that because i kind of knew it was wrong because like obviously it's wrong but i rationalized it because i knew he was using me because he like recently got an ex-girlfriend or something and like he still wasn't over her and he wanted like to cling to someone and to like use someone for like satisfaction like and to like have someone there and just to use someone for like comfort even if like you he, he wasn't like really attached to me at all because we were virtually like acquaintances borderline friends kind of thing and so and i'm like once i'm close to someone like i'm a very good communicator and like i tell people what's up and i like want feedback when i'm talking to someone and he's like I would say I'm like in the middle between introverted and extroverted. Occasionally I can be more extroverted and occasionally I can be more introverted. But for the most part, I think I like reside in the middle of it. Like I'm pretty balanced on both ends, which means I'm pretty much average, which is great. <clears throat> Anyways, so and he's like extremely introverted. So which is fine, like, you can be extremely introverted and be friends with me, that's fine, but, like, I don't think that's someone that I could be compatible with because I need communication. Like, I'm totally fine with, like, having, like, comfortable silence when, like, I'm comfortable with someone, 
But when I'm first getting to know someone, like, I want to have conversations, not just, like, awkward silence and awkward looks and, like, just, no, like, please, like, talk to me, you know? And he just doesn't. Like, he's not a very good communicator, which, like, really bugs the hell out of me. <laughs> like, I can never do that. Like, I just can't. So I came to that realization and was just, like, I can't do it. And, like, the last day of school, I think, was, like, I kind of let him on. So I think he still thinks that I like him, even though I never really liked him to begin with. I just let him on because I was going to use him. And that's so fucked up on so many levels. And I don't want to explain that to him because he's going to hate me. But I feel like I need to because, like, like, why? Like, that is so fucked up. Like, I mean, I was I was younger and, like, I made mistakes. And, like, I already knew it was wrong. I just was, like, rationalizing and being like, well, it's because he's using me too. So it's a use situation. But, like, really... He was using me in a very different way than how I was going to use him. So, yeah. Angela does not agree. Um, so, like, yeah. I'm just going to tell him straight up. Like, I'm sorry. I changed my mind. Like, I just I just don't like you anymore. I'm sorry. Like, you need to go find someone who's better for you. Because I'm a very fucked up individual. Like, you do not want me as a partner. Like, I am so fucked up. <laughs> uh... Speaking of which, I joined the GSA club, which I'm super excited for. Like, I'm really happy I joined the GSA club, um, which is the Gay Straight Alliance club. And then I also joined, I actually can't remember the name that well, but I joined this, like, mental health awareness club, which I'm super excited for as well. Like, I gave them my number, so, like, I hope they contacted me, contact me, but I don't know if they will, will excuse me. There were literally, like, maybe three or four other people in there, so... Hopefully they contact me. And then the Gay Straight Alliance Club, I know um, I know the president, like one of the pres like the president, the new president of that club is my friend. So she'll definitely contact me. She's actually the one who reminded me to join the GSA club because I was kind of like, Oh, clubs, right. I'm not social and never mind. But then I forgot completely forgot about the Gay Straight Alliance Club. And then my my friend was like, Hey, like I did you join the Gay Straight Alliance Club yet? And I was like Oh, yeah, that, I forgot, shit. <laughs> there are places where I'm actually included. My bad, I forgot about that. Usually I'm alone. <laughs> Fun. Um, ugh, excuse me. Um, I don't know why I said excuse me. Like, I just, ugh, I just, ugh, I just want like that. Like, how does that signify an excuse me? Okay, anyways, um... That's my mom. Um, I just want to take a nap and drink some water, like, simultaneously. Because I, like, drank three or four cups of water. <laughs> like, and I'm still thirsty, so that's probably really bad. <laughs> um, also, while I was walking home from school, like, I started getting dizzy. Like, that's... Wow, that's good. Also, I'm starting to get a headache. I think it's from being dehydrated. That's great. Love heat. Ugh. But in two months, it's going to be October, and I'm so excited. Like, I love October. October is great. Anywho. Sorry. Popcorn's, like, he's, like, I have no idea what he's doing. Hold on. Oh my god, I love popcorn literally so much. Like, he was literally, okay, he was, like, trying to, like, eat his skin because he's shedding right now. So there's, like, a lot of skin that's, like, slowly falling off. And it's not because he's diseased or anything, like, reptiles naturally shed. It just looks kind of gross and creepy <laughs> when you first see it. I mean, it still kind of looks gross and creepy. Anyways, so it's, like, on his neck. And, like, he was, like, literally, like, going like this over and over again. And I was like, what the hell is he doing? And I walked over... And, like, his mouth was, like, opening, and then I was like, oh, my God, he's, like, trying to eat the skin on his neck. Like, are you kidding? <laughs> oh, my God, popcorn. Okay, anyways, um, I mean, not, like, his actual skin skin, but, like, his peeling skin. Anyways, um, yeah, so I have to talk to that kid and tell him that, like, Plus, he's, like, two years younger than me. Like, you're too young for a relationship. 
especially with someone as complex as I am. Like, literally, you either shouldn't be in a relationship at all or should be in a relationship that's, like, very innocent and, like, oh, my God, like, I love you, like, blah, 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 blah. Like, I am way too much work. And, like, I know he can't handle me, first off. Second off, I'm not even really attracted to him. I was just going to use him, which is really fucked up, and, like, I shouldn't have done that. Like, plus, like, just really, like, I just... I mean, I kind of have a thing for people who are younger than me. <laughs> but, like, that's going to be an incredible problem when I'm 18 because literally everything, everyone younger than me is a minor. And, like, that's illegal. So, like, that's great. <laughs> who knows? I might fall in love with someone who's, like, older than me, but that's probably very doubtful. So, fun. Anyways. <sighs> um... Other than that, like, I literally haven't done nothing today. Like, I just went to my classes, went through the whole spiel of, like, school, and, like, this is what my class is. Like, hello, like, welcome to my class. Blah, 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 don't care. I feel really bad for my journalism teacher, though, because, like, my journalism teacher, I love him, and he's always, like, pretty excited and happy. And... Today, he's so sick. Like, you can tell he's so sick. Like, he's just, like, he's just out of it. He's, like, he was telling, like, everyone that he's, like, took NyQuil last night and took DayQuil today. So, he's kind of loopy and, like, oh, my God. Like, I feel so bad for him. But, like, he needs to, like, be here for the first day, so. And then, but tomorrow he's not going to be here because his daughter recently went through surgery for something. And then, it's like mild surgery, so it's not too bad, but he still needs to be there to take care of her. And he's also really sick, so he needs to be home because of that, too. Um, yeah. But I'm really excited because I'm taking advanced journalism, so that means, like, I'm going to be, like, one of the, like, people who, like, actually, like, runs the magazine. Like, I'm going to be, like, an editor. Like, I'm going to be writing stories and, like, being an editor. The only, like, and probably taking pictures, too, which I'm so excited for. Because last semester, or last year when I did journalism, like, the first year that I did journalism, like, I somewhat enjoyed it, but I also hated how freaking cliquey it was. Like, there were so, like, just, like, all of the editors-in-chief were such jerks. Like, literally, there was one girl who I kind of liked, and then who I actually really liked because she was actually genuinely nice and only did things professionally. And then the rest of them, literally, they had, like, one little gang leader and she was, like, Miss Dictator, like, this is the way that I want it and this is the way that it's going to be. So, like, I don't give a shit about what you want. I will write it down in my little notebook of our brainstorm ideas, but I won't actually apply it. And then even if she did take your idea, she would take your idea but then speak spin it off of her way of wanting it and she wouldn't listen to what she wanted and it was just so annoying and I couldn't stand her and then her and her little minions who literally were like kind of nice people they like you could tell they were nice people but they like literally did not have any backbone and were kind of like yeah like let's go along with her and like they were like incredibly smart and they did their jobs well but they also, like, didn't speak up for themselves. They didn't speak up for us, even though they knew that what that bitch was doing was, like, hella fucking rude. And just, like, are you kidding me? Like, it was just ridiculous. And then I hated how every time we went in the brainstorm room, that head bitch always had some shit to talk about our teacher. And I love our teacher. Like, our teacher is literally amazing. Like, he gives us so much leeway to do our own thing. And he tells us, like, the basic rules that are even still flexible then. And just tells us the deadline for the magazines. And then he's like, other than that, like, you can do whatever the hell you want to do. And, like, I'm okay with that as long as, like, you go have your work edited with the editors-in-chief. And then you have it proofed with me as well. And, like, he's just such an amazing teacher. Like, I love him so much. And she just trash-talked him every time we were alone. She was like, oh my god, like, he's so controlling. And I'm like, literally, he's the opposite of controlling you, bitch. Like, are you kidding me? I hated her so much. And I hated her little minions who were so nice. And they helped you when they could. And they were such good people. But, like, they literally, under her, like, reign of terror, like, she literally... <sighs> like, I freaking hated her. Like, she just... And she did not like me. Because... 
I don't really have that big of a backbone either. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm not, I hate confrontation. So I didn't like flat out tell her that she was being a bitch, but like, I would kind of like give her the side eye and be like, okay, bitch, like you're being a bit much right now. Or when my idea was twisted, I would be like, but like, this is what I want. Like, why can I not have this? Like, this doesn't change the main story. Because a lot of times she would be always be the one writing like the huge stories, like the stories that were like the like the biggest stories in the magazine. So like the ones that were like maybe four or five pages, and they were the stories that were on the headline. So the the co like the cover of the magazine, which is fine. Like whatever your Miss Head Chief, whatever fine. You can let your story be on the cover. But then she would make her story influence the entire magazine, and like. The entire magazine was basically just like little mini stories that backed up what the big story was about. I'm like, I mean, sure, like, I mean, I get that's kind of like how magazines are sometimes, but like, it doesn't always have to be that way. And like, it can be in the same genre, but it doesn't exactly, like, it doesn't have to be, like, literally, she had the smaller stories almost exact clones of her big story with the same exact message are you kidding like literally like i was just like are you are you like are you serious like okay we can have like for example like her little millennials thing like she had this huge thing with millennials and like it was all about how millennials are like unwanted and blah 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 and like people hate millennials because of all these misconceptions and blah blah, blah and those aren't true and there are a lot of millennials who are great and she like rare like a lot of her stories like when she ever was talking about like millennials and how they're misunderstood like a lot of them had the same exact message just over and over and over again so the magazines were really repetitive and really boring in my opinion and just like i was just fed up with them and i actually ended up leaning in towards like the ones that were about opinions so a lot of the opinion based stories I was like into because a lot of those like you got leeway like you got to t like talk about whatever you wanted so a lot of times in the magazines that she would run like I would go for the opinion based stories which I almost never do because I'm just not that kind of person but like she was forcing me to be that kind of person because I just hated how controlling she was of the other stories like it was just insane like I freaking hated her well not hated her but like I really hated how she was she might have been a great person, but she honestly was a terrible, like, editor-in-chief. Like, I just, she, she's just, she's one of those people who, like, wants to be a leader and tries too hard to be a leader and, like, overcompensates for, like, I don't know, something that she's not confident in or whatever and, like, overdoes things and just, like, is so controlling. And I hate controlling people people like being a leader is about caring for your people and like making sure that they're going in the right direction and supporting them rather than being like head on like follow me like I am your leader like this is what I want so this is what you give me it's like you're just guiding them gently you're not forcing them to do the shit that you want are you kidding me like are you fucking kidding me like I was just like like I just hated that journalism class because of how controlling she was and normally I love every single class that I have that has anything to do with journalism and my journalism teacher but like because of that one girl and how controlling she was that entire class like year like I just couldn't do it like I just couldn't enjoy myself like I just didn't like it but like this year we are like on our own and we don't have her and we don't have the people who are like we're all about her and like just yeah so I mean it's kind of scary because a lot of us are kind of new so we don't know a lot like a lot of us are still learning and like we don't really know much like I honestly don't even know how to design anything like I've literally forgotten every systematic thing about designing a page so <laughs> that's gonna be fun to relearn and then <laughs> But I can take pictures pretty well, and I can, um, like, write stories pretty well, and I can also, like, find people to write stories on pretty well, and brainstorm ideas, and then I can also edit. So, like, I can do all of those things. So, I mean, 
other than design, like, I, I'm, I'm pretty good with everything else. But, like, I really need to ask LeBlanc, or, well, I mean, like, a lot of people have their last name LeBlanc. It's fine. Anyways, so, I really need to ask my journalism teacher for, like, the original, like, um, journalism, like, one paper on how to design. Because I literally am horrible at design and, like... I just know I, I'm horrible at design like I I'm good at video editing but design is so like precise and kind of mathematical that like it's really difficult for me to memorize and like grasp my head around and <laughs> so that's gonna be a challenge I'm probably only gonna be able to master master like the basic designs of like a normal page like i just i just can't do any of the like the cool designs like someone else who's actually talented and actually really passionate about that kind of thing can do that but like i literally just can't i'm sorry um so i'll have to try and then explain that to my uh my teacher and be like i'm sorry but like i, I will try but like it's really you're not gonna get much from me um i also really want to tell my story of discovering that I have ADHD because my teacher was talking about how like we should incorporate more about mental health um awareness and because a lot of people are struggling with mental health like mental health um in our generation like we have a lot of anxiety and stuff and I was just thinking like oh my god like if he wants us to talk about that I mean I know ADHD isn't like a big thing like not a lot of people have it and like not a lot of people talk about it actually I mean, a lot of people joke about it and are like, oh, I have ADHD because I get mem fidgeting so much. Or like, I have ADHD because I can't focus, blah, blah, blah. But, like, nobody really talks about it, like, seriously. And nobody really, like, sees it as that big of a problem. And I, like, want to bring awareness to that because I do have ADHD. And, like, there could be some other kids in my school. There's, like, more than likely there's other kids in my school with ADHD and are, like, maybe don't even know that they have ADHD. And, like, so I want to write a piece on my story of like discovering that I have ADHD and like what ADHD is and how it runs in my family and like how it's not a bad thing like mental health isn't a like mental like health like or disabilities like are not bad things like they like I mean I'm kind of still trying to accept that it's not a bad thing but like they truly aren't they like I don't know like, they're just a part of you and you can't help it. It's like you can't help that you have a mole on your face. Like, it's just a part of you and you just have to learn and grow with it. Okay? And in some ways it can be your strength because, like, I would never be an advocate for, like, something like this if I didn't understand it myself. Like, I would never join a mental health awareness club if I didn't experience it myself. Well, I mean, maybe I would because of my mom, but maybe I wouldn't because I don't understand. I wouldn't understand my mom if I didn't have ADHD. Like, you know, like, it's just, I don't know. It just brings a lot. Anyways, um, <laughs> I only have, like, ten minutes left to talk, so, and I don't really have anything else to add. So, yeah, that was pretty much my day. Anyways, goodbye. <laughs>